It has been a few years since Google made tablets. The last one they released before this one was actually called a Nexus 7. It's a Nexus line that actually is no longer there. The Pixel line replaced it. But since the Nexus 7, actually Samsung, LG, TCL, other companies, Xiaomi even, have been producing tablets and keeping the ecosystem going for Android. We have iOS, but for Android, we've had other companies basically providing us that experience. Google comes back into the tablet experience, but tries to give us something unique. If you're familiar with the Nest Hub or something more of a smart display from Google, this is a very popular line that they've released and they have multiple sizes. Today, we're gonna take a look at the Pixel tablet, a collaboration of what the Nest Hub Max is going to give us, as well as a Google-centric tablet is going to provide us. Also, we have some features coming in from the Pixel Fold. So, very happy to be able to share with you guys my initial impressions and what are the good and the not so good things about the brand new Pixel tablet from Google. Let's check them out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So the box that we're looking here is uh, the package that included basically the tablet as well as the charging dock. I'm not sure if at a later time Google is going to be releasing a different version, but at this point, this is what we have. Uh, it actually is pretty much everything you need to be able to set it up and start working. It is a tablet at its core with a dock to actually allow it to be a stand as well as obviously uh, additional functionality for speaker built in as well as charging. Now included in the box, we have the tablet, the tablet itself very nice and, and I chose this color again 128 gigs of internal storage we have the poco pin connectors with magnetic connection on the back that's going to allow us to basically marry it to the dock the dock itself is very nice and very lightweight pretty much just a charging dock slash uh, speakers built in and of course the ability of using it as a stand because that's one of the biggest functions we have a barrel connector here that is a proprietary barrel connector included in the box and that's going to be able to give us the ability of charging our tablet now one thing I will say that this runs at basically about 15 watts uh, maximum charging that's able to provide us charging capabilities for the 7,000 milliampere that we have built into the tablet. Now, when we're looking at the actual unit itself, we have a 10.95 inch, basically an 11 inch LCD panel at running at a 2560 by 1600. And it is basically a 60 Hertz refresh rate display. Very nice and actually very consistent UI element and very beautiful. And you'll notice here one of the very new features that even is available on the Pixel Fold. And that's gonna be that uh, emoji wallpaper that's more reactive to when we touch the background. So like, I'm gonna go ahead and just close that here. And yeah, come on. I think if I touch, yeah, so like you can see the reactive functionality is just, I think it's picking up on the watch because this actual widget, if I press and hold, you can see it's a lot bigger uh, than it actually looks like. And the main benefits that we get with this tablet is the fact that it is powered by the Tensor G2, the same processor powering the Pixel 7 Pro and the Pixel 7, as well as the Pixel 7a, which is one of the main benefits here. We have a quad speaker setup built in here. We have one, let's go ahead and see if we can get this to focus. One, two, and then of course, three, four. We also have a triple uh, mic configuration here to give us the ability of uh, getting great audio out of it, an eight megapixel front facing centered camera and an eight megapixel top right mounted ca uh, camera here. And this is gonna be one of the ways that you actually know what's the right way to hold it when you're holding it in more like portrait and landscape. When you're holding it in, in standard tablet format, this is gonna be pretty much where things are. Volume rocker volume, and fingerprint sensor as well as the power button is present at the top. When you wanna hold it more of it, like I say, a phone style, let's so basically turn it on, you always need to remember Camera goes up, volume rocker stays in this form because when we're actually putting it in this form, we change the volume, you notice that that's how the volume level goes up and down. If you just put it down as far as a tablet mode, that volume rocker experience stays the exact same thing. Volume up to the right, volume down to the left. It's something to keep in mind when you're looking at it. But yeah, pretty much straight experience, what we've seen before. Uh, we do have bezels on the side, that's to be able to hold the tablet and not actually interact with the UI. And of course we have access to the Google, uh, to the app drawer, uh, Google feed sitting here on the right on the left side, and then we can swipe it. Uh, one of the other things that I really love is the ability of launching that little option here that we have on the bottom. And that's really one of the cool things. And if I press and hold on it a little bit, I can open it up in split screen mode. Let's say I wanna open it up with my music. It'll open it up and I can of course resize and make things work just the way I want them. And we're gonna talk a little bit about app formatting in a little bit, but that's pretty much one of the best benefits here. The magnet is, for all intents and purposes, I would say strong enough when you get used to it. And the best way to say, I will say is, put the tablet ma uh, matching to the side, so basically we're going a little bit above it, and then slide it down and let it just magnetically connect. Tablet, uh, for the most part, I always will say, always, always, always use two fingers to hold and push the button. Never try to just do it this way. Because depending on the force level that you're doing, you'll notice that it actually will kick it off the magnets. And that's something to keep in mind. So always put a finger here to be able to kind of unlock it and get access to it. We'll go ahead and turn it on here and then unlocking. On the lock screen, one thing I will probably say, uh, well, let's go ahead and actually plug it in. So 
the barrel charger plugs in on the back and you'll notice right away that it starts charging. So removing it stops the charging, connecting it charges. It does have a chime a little bit to be able to turn it on. So you just want to be aware and it gives you the charging time at the top. You're able to obviously activate uh, the access your home, the toggles for home services. Again, some of the things that they brought over here from the, uh, the smart home uh, display that they've had in the past. Also, if I don't touch it and do anything on it and I leave it in there, it'll go automatically into screensaver mode. So let's go ahead and unlock and I'm going to go in. Uh, one thing I'll also mention that I really, really love is this is truly the best way to do notification panel. I swipe down, I get both system on. All my notifications stay on the right, all my uh, toggles are on the left. If I turn it over to more of a standard tablet uh, or phone design, you'll notice it goes directly into that format. But when you're using it in tablet form, even on the Pixel Fold, this is definitely going to be the format that I feel like that's the right one. We go under the settings tab. There is a specific section here called hub mode. That's when it's sitting here on the actual, you know, the Nest Hub. So let's go ahead and bring it down. We have the ability of turning on our screensaver, picking our Google feed or whatever albums you'd like to be able to. We have the ability of picking up basically our, uh, our pictures, feeds, and whatever we want to be able to. It does have uh, Google Photos integration, similar to what we've seen on other devices from them. At a glance for notification and of course accessing the assistant. Lock screen privacy notification controls. This is going to be home controls that you want to be able to turn on. You do need to download and make sure that the Google Home app is installed and that you're logged into it for those to show up on the main home screen accessing the assistant. And one of the really cool features here is the ability of casting to this device. This has a Chromecast built in. So which means this is going to give you some of the really cool functionalities being able to cast things to it, similar to what we've done before with smart displays. Lastly, we have the ability of going under uh, the, you know, docket settings, information about the actual dock itself. You're able to purchase additional docks directly from Google and have one in every room if you'd like, or have them in different parts of the house. So it's not going to be an issue. So you always are able to charge your tablet. One thing I will say, uh, when you're not using it in tablet form and it does go into more of a screensaver mode, um, it will stay on if there is light in the room and it will stay in the screensaver mode unless you turn it off by manually. And I'm not just shutting it off like this, but by manual. So like this will be, let's go ahead and turn it off. And like you see here, I actually have my Dragon Ball stuff going on. I can actually scroll through all the different images. I actually pretty much have only two pictures in this album, but you can assign any album that you want within your pictures. And of course, it'll keep scrolling through. You notice right there, it shows the name of the tablet, Pixel tablet, and you have the little shortcut for the home access, of course, and then uh, information about the actual image that you have in there. Otherwise, you just basically swipe away, takes you back, automatically wants to, uh, to put in your pin. Just go ahead and put that pin and finger there, and it works absolutely fantastic. Changing all the customizations that you've seen in the past, all of those things are there. Swiping up uh, from the bottom, we have access to the search. The keyboard is super responsive, very, very nice. I really love that part in there. It has a lot of um, the benefits of the G2 and the optimization of Android that we've had from before. Uh, we again mentioned before we have four speakers built in here one thing i will mention part of the configuration that we have in here is there's actually two footings in here these are rubber footings sitting on the back on the bottom so that in case you actually have the tablet on uh, let's say it's, it's connected in here and you're getting used to it and you accidentally tip it down it'll always have that option there. So it'll kick in and it'll sit there. But what I also found it to be very, very helpful, let's say if you have something else that you want to be able to, uh, let's say, set it up against and use it as like more of a kickstand, this also allows it to actually become a very nice little box that actually just sits there and the tilt factor works really good. Again, volume rocker, two additional microphones here. We have the power button and of course the fingerprint sensor sitting on the right side. Now I will say one of my favorite features about the recent videos that I've released on my channel was Ready4 and that's obviously running on my Motorola device. Now the biggest benefit here is I'm actually using a Motorola Ready4 Assistant for Android and because this is actually a tablet running Android, I'm now able to run uh, almost like the best way to explain it, like a second instance of my device and that's one of the big benefits here. So when I turn on the camera here, you'll notice right there, this is going to be looking at itself. That's actually the camera. It's sitting here. It's the camera of the phone. And uh, we're able to use Android in here. We're able to transfer files. And all this is actually done quite easily. You just go straight into the Ready4 application, pair it to a tablet or display. From there, pair it into the device. You'll notice that my connection is there. I'll say desktop view. It's going to automatically open it up here. It's going to say Ready4 Assistant, and it's going to launch it. And it'll be basically a view of my device. And I'm able to open up the Google Play Store. And what we get here essentially is just a separate instance. You notice right there, I opened the Google Play Store and the exact same thing happens. We can't open the same app multiple times, but we could definitely basically run different applications at the same time. If I want to be able to basically, let's say, open up Twitter in here, and I can go ahead and open up Instagram on this side, it's going to work perfectly fine. Now, one of the functionalities we talked about was obviously the ability of casting directly to our tablet. Now, one thing I will say, you need to be aware that this only works when the tablet is in hub mode. Meaning, if you're using the tablet by itself as a regular tablet, 
functionally, this is not going to support it, meaning you cannot cast to this and it's not going to work. Conversely, the same thing with the text messaging, when you're able to get it connected to text messaging. It only works when the tablet knows it's connected to the dock. So it means it gets that thing, you'll get that notification. And then now we are connected and it actually now works as a casting sub, uh, solution. So here I have my video playing directly on uh, YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and hit give it a second. It's going to connect and you'll see right there it says Pixel Tablet. I'll go ahead and click it. And for all intents and purposes, my Pixel tablet now is my display. It's going to it start playing the video. Wirelessly, but it also does feature a wired solution as long as you're using a desktop and application. That's the next stop. This is where, let's say... You and you're able to skip forward and cancel, of course, if you want to be able to do that. And then just go ahead and disconnect. It'll work with anything that you're able to use Chromecast in it, as this really works beautifully. So if you want to be able to use it like a regular tablet, you can go ahead and launch your applications, YouTube, Netflix, either Fuel Max. You can even use the Assistant to open up uh, you know, videos or certain shows directly from here. Play Avatar on Max. Now, weird enough, I actually forgot the fact that Avatar is not on Max, and I thought it was on actually HBO Max, and it actually is on Disney Plus, so it automatically recognized that I was trying to play that title specifically for my Disney Plus subscription. It launched it, and it ran it uh, for me perfectly fine. And of course, you can launch any of the Google Assistant functionalities that you're used to doing. You can click the microphone over here, press and hold the power button at the top to be able to launch the Assistant, similar to what we've done in the past, change the lock screen, change the wallpapers, everything that you want to do. Let's go and talk a little bit about the cameras and what we're able to do here. And as I mentioned to you guys at the beginning, this is actually supporting an 8 megapixel front facing camera and an 8 megapixel rear facing camera. We have night sight, lawn exposure, portrait camera, video and modes under that. We have panorama, photosphere and lens. At the end of the day, I'll probably say this. These cameras are going to be the best solution for video conferencing and maybe some light image taking at its best. And what I mean by this essentially is when I was using Night Sight here, and although Night Sight definitely worked really, really good, you could definitely see here that the focus level here was slightly off because it actually was focusing directly on the Dragon Ball Z, which is not actually the, the ball itself, as opposed to the actual characters, as you could see, they're more of the center of the picture. There was also no touch to focus, so I wasn't able to do that. Uh, what I do wanna say though is remember, we do have those functionalities of being able to use the uh, Magic Eraser under Tools. Actually, we'll go ahead under tools, we'll go magic eraser, and we'll give it a second to launch this thing. It didn't find anything. I just want to get rid of that massive boulder that's sitting right there. And we're just going to make it go and right there. Perfectly done. And of course, just ready to go. And you can do this obviously with almost everything that you want to do. There's the, uh, the unblur, portrait blur, all of the stuff that you've done before. Let's go ahead and discard. Swipe so away, this is just a quick uh, selfie taken directly with the front facing camera. This is, uh, actually if I take them back, this was the rear facing camera, this is the front facing camera. And then of course, some images right there. And let's go ahead and do a quick sample. Let's uh, pause this. Let's go outside and do a quick sample of the front facing and rear facing cameras on the brand new Pixel tablet. One thing to keep in mind though is 1080p is going to be the best that you can get. We're gonna go ahead and do a quick test of the front facing and the rear facing camera on the brand new Pixel tablet. Now, this is not intended to be a good example of what you should be doing with this, but it's an example of what the audio and video will look like if you're say doing a video call, WhatsApp, chat, anything that requires video input. Uh, the cameras are pretty much matched on the front and on the back and the main experience here is gonna be a 1080p resolution at maximum resolution. There is no 4K, there is no higher resolution shooting. It's just gonna be 1080p. Even though we have a higher a processor, the Tensor G2 is a powerful one, uh, it's actually, again, mostly focused on video chat. This is a tablet at the end of the day. But let's go ahead and switch over to the main sensor on the back. One thing to mention, we have three microphones built in here to be able to capture our audio and voice reduction. So the hope is that the audio sounds great and hopefully the video is also to your liking. Switching it over to the main sensor on the back, the biggest thing that we'll probably say here is that again, 1080p is gonna be the maximum resolution. Uh, the microphone should perform better. I hope this sounds actually a little bit better than the front facing, but at the end of the day, as a tablet, this is obviously providing us an experience to be able to share content. Unfortunately, low light performance is not the greatest here. It actually gets very grainy quickly if there's not enough light. My hope is that even here in a little bit of shade outdoors, you're able to get a good image or of what the quality of the video will be here. Uh, at the end of the day, again, it's a great tablet with a lot of smart home functionalities. I want to do a quick sample for you guys real quick on uh, music playback on this. We're going to play our favorite song. This is Alex Crindo Jumbo ANCS release. Now, this is always going to be one of my favorite songs. We're going to play the volume at not exactly 100%. I'm going to play it at a somewhat of a, uh, like let's say 75% or 80% here. I think feel like that's where it is. I'll let us go ahead and focus. So again, this is our favorite song, Alex Crindo Jumbo. You can hear it very nicely. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. This is going to be where the drop happens. Jack it up. 
So the way the sound plays in this one is overall, when you have it disconnected, it automatically plays the music on the speakers, four speakers that we have built in. Once you connect it, there's like a little bit of a visual EQ that you just saw right there. And that tells you basically that the dock is actually going to take over and the speakers from the dock will take over the sound. There's no way to play audio from the speakers on the tablet and the dock at the same time. It just takes over. And then obviously whatever volume you've set here will set the same thing, but it's going to be at the level of what the dock can allow you to do. Now, one thing I will say though, at 100% volume level, when you're using it on a tablet mode by itself, without using the dock, the sound gets a little bit distorted, which is a little bit, uh, I'm not sure why, but it could be just because of the size of the speakers. It does play well at about 70 to 85%, and I think like 90% is fine. And then of course the dock will carry you throughout the way. Uh, one thing to mention though, the dock does not work when it's not connected to power. So if you have this connected to the back of your tablet, and let's say you disconnect the power and walk away, you're using it just as a stand, the speakers on the tablet are gonna be functioning. If you wanna use the tablet, the speakers on the dock, you have to provide power as the dock itself does not have any way of pulling power from the tablet. The last thing I will mention before we get too far off the, the dock and functionality that we have here, when it's connected to the dock, the tablet will not charge beyond 90%. It will only go to 100% when you're charging it via the wired solution, which is basically using the USB-C connector that we have in here on the bottom left. And that's going to be also another functional thing that you can. Although in the box, they do not include a USB-C charging option. They only provide us the barrel connector for the dock. It is something to keep in mind. You can charge it with the dock or by using the USB-C. No wireless charging and it is a 7,020 milliampere battery that is built in here. So a lot of different things that I've kind of thrown at you, but those are a lot of the good things that we have in here. Uh, one of the, my biggest and favorite things is that little dock function that we have, the little mini uh, option that we had in there. And of course, the ability of actually pressing holding and being able to do functions from it or even do split screen. So again, opening up the Google Play Store, shifting things around, you can basically configure it swiping away, everything runs the, to the speed that you'd expect. And although it's not running at a higher refresh rate, like with 90 or 120, it still feels very nice and very smooth. Um, one of the other things that I really love about this is that it actually syncs up my messages directly from my phone. So basically in here, I'm using Google Messages. Sorry. So one of the things that I like to use is Google Messages on my device. And one of the biggest things I can do here is that I actually sync up my messages. Any new messages that come on my phone, they come here. So as if we're, when we're using it as the web interface for messages, it actually runs on the tablet. So phone calls and everything works great. Ready4 allows me not only to share information, being able to launch my phone interface on the, the, uh, on the display, but I'm also able to run a quick hotspot from it directly. So I don't have to run a hotspot directly from the phone. I can use Ready4, it works great. File sharing works great. So now let's talk about the not so bad. And what I mean by this is a lot of the things that I'm going to mention to you guys today could be fixed in the future in a future update. Being that this is a pixel means this will get better over time. Now they're promising us a lot of years of software updates, so that means this is actually expected to last for quite a bit of time. But the first thing I will say here, the limitation of the display being only at 60 hertz, and even though it's a great 60 hertz experience, is limiting when it comes down to gaming. 90 frames per second typically on like a PUBG Mobile is something I've been able to do with the G2. This is something we're not going to be able to do here. So any higher refresh rate games are going to be limited by the device, although you're able to do them and play with them very well. You're going to have that limited experience, and that's something to keep in mind. The other thing I want to talk about is uh, the magnets that we have in here. Although they're great and it becomes easier, let's go ahead and disconnect it from here. And one thing I'll say is just always set it and then let it slide down to the spot and it sits correctly. But nine times out of 10, when I come over and I try to do this, it just just comes down right away. And I'm not doing a lot like I'm not trying to like I'm not doing like heavy. No, this is literally just like this. So I always have to remember to hold and push so that I don't push it down because it is not exactly the strongest. And it will always do this, this little slight disconnect disconnects it from the dock. It does have a, a little bit of a rubber footing here to protect it, but again, it's, I wish this was a little bit stronger from the sense of how the dock was set. After some usage and getting used to it, I don't think this will be a big issue, but you have to remember doing so. But with the other systems that we've had, it works a little bit differently. And again, I can just go ahead and unlock it, use it right away. I will say uh, compared to what we get with the original smart displays that we get from Google, as you can imagine, this is definitely a much bigger display. But the performance that we get here with the speakers that we have are much stronger. So if you're upgrading or let's say you have a smart home display at home and you start comparing the performance to what the Pixel tablet does, you're going to get a little bit underwhelmed. And it's not because the Pixel tablet is not great. It's just that that's my experience. The Nest Hub Max has been what I've been using for many years. And now that I'm using the tablet with the Pixel tablet, I'm, I was expecting the same level of experience to transfer here when we say this is a smart home solution as well as being basically a tablet. So that's one of some of the things I was looking into. 
last thing is the app formatting that I talked to you guys before. So when we're looking in here, let's say we open up Twitter. Right now, for the most part, Twitter, Instagram, they basically open up in more of the standard UI element. But if you just have to turn them on this way, then it becomes obviously more of an expanded. But you always have to remember that you actually have to open it up and then remember that you also turned on the tablet the wrong way and then do it the right way to get the full experience. And then you get more of a full uh, Android experience, I would say. The recent app, all of those run pretty much the same. You open it up, shows you the recent app here. And I love that UI elements and all of those are again, transferring from what we've seen uh, from, again, uh, the Pixel tablet, Pixel devices from before. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna say is there's a lot of things to like, and there are some things to be concerned about, but nothing that actually is a deal breaker. If you're looking to get a pure Google experience, meaning you know the ability of taking pictures, the ability of using the uh, basically the magic eraser functionality, the ability of having video calls and chats and stuff like that, because it's running Android, it has a lot more functionality and support applications that are not typically installable on the Nest Hub Max or the Nest the display smart displays that Google has. This is running a custom uh, system that allows you to basically just. Um, launch smart home functionalities, but it doesn't really give you the full Google experience. And this is where I feel like even with all the updates that we've received, meaning the ability of using Chrome and some other functionality with web searches, a tablet is still gonna be way better. The ability of installing all the apps you want, the ability of, again, being able to mirror your display if you have a Motorola device and transfer content and share connectivity. Those are unique things that only Android can do. And right now, smart home displays can't do it. If you wanted more of those smart home functionalities, they could potentially add them in the future. I'll say this, that the Nest Hub Max didn't have the automatic, um, uh, the ability of being able to start asking it questions without actually saying the keyword um, at launch. That came in much later. So again, with time, things could get better. The sound on this, I was hoping for a much more room filling sound because of the size of the display and the dock that we had in the back. But I guess overall, I think it's pretty good. It gets pretty decent with the dock itself. On the on the tablet itself, I'll keep it around 70 to 80% because you are gonna hear some distortion at the higher levels. Uh, hopefully they can do something about that with software, although I feel like this is just a resonance in the actual construction of it. Uh, the material that we have in here is very nice, uh, not fingerprint uh, magnet on the back, on the front, of course, as you'd imagine. Um, I don't feel like there's any issues with it there. I think at the end of the day, I would probably say if you're looking for a great tablet from Google, the Pixel tablet is going to be the best and only solution right now. I hope we'll see some other options available later on. Uh, you're able to pick up additional docks if you'd like. And of course, the tablet itself does have a combination, which is what I'm sharing with you guys today, in either 128 or 256 storage cap uh, capacity so that you're able to enjoy your content. And of course, uh, if you're traveling with you and going with you, just take it off the dock. It's a tablet. It goes with you, you charge it, you run it like a regular tablet. And when you come back home, set it up back on the dock and you're ready to go. Um, just remember, don't push too hard on the fingerprint sensor on the top. You will knock it off the magnets and you'll always have to put it back on. Uh, but other than that, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. And I hope you like this video. I'll see you soon.